I'm going to show how you can make radioactive artificial isotopes uh, at home. Um, specifically, I'm going to make radioactive manganese 56 by neutron capture on natural manganese 55. The first thing we're going to do is prepare two uh, identical samples of uh, manganese dioxide or pyrolusite. That's this uh, black powder. It's real nasty material. It's nasty stuff. Gets on everything. So I'm not actually going to handle that right now. I have the uh, samples already made. This is the one we'll be irradiating. And this one marked with a B uh, will be a control. It has a similar amount of material in it, but uh, we're not going to irradiate it with neutrons. So I have here a uh, 5 millicuri americium beryllium source made with uh, many parts of uh, old-fashioned smoke detectors and uh, beryllium foil. This will be the source of neutrons that we use. And we need to slow these neutrons down so that they can interact with uh, the uh, manganese. So I'm going to put this source into a flux trap or a neutron oven, which is simply a large piece of uh, polyethylene that reflects and slows down these neutrons. Then if we take the uh, neutron detector we can see that down in the flux trap there is quite a uh, concentration of uh, uh, useful low energy neutrons. So I'll put the uh, item that we're going to irradiate, the manganese dioxide, into the neutron oven along with the source. And finally I'll put a plastic plug on the neutron oven to uh, reflect even more neutrons down into it. Manganese 56 emits gamma rays of a known energy, 850 kilo electron volts, when it decays. We will use this uh, scintillation detector here, a sodium iodide scintillator, to detect the gamma radiation from our uh, sample of manganese dioxide that's been irradiated overnight. Um, we also know that manganese 56 has a, a half-life of approximately two and a half hours. So we will also be measuring the, uh, the time rate of decay of our sample to look for a characteristic exponential curve with a period of two and a half hours. This sodium iodide detector is linked by these cables to a NIM bin. Uh, the bin contains a number of modules that are useful for processing the signal and collecting the data. On the left hand side are an amplifier and a single channel analyzer. In the center are a multi-channel scaler, a analog to digital converter, and finally uh, an acquisition interface module that stores uh, digitized data from the MCS and the ADC and communicates with a, a uh, personal computer to collect the data. Finally on the far right is a high voltage supply that operates the scintillation detector. If we look at the uh, screen of the PC we'll see that we're going to collect two types of data. In the upper frame will be an energy spectrum. In the lower frame will be a time spectrum. The energy spectrum is uh, going to be dominated by gamma ray peaks in the energy range of interest. Let's take a look at, uh, at this spectrum. Right now I have a calibration source in the scintillation detector and the calibration source has some cesium-137 which is responsible for the large peak at the center of the screen. It also has some cobalt-60 responsible for the peaks at the right side of the screen. The, uh, these uh, nuclides produce gamma rays at a known energy and so we can use them to calibrate the scale for the uh, pulse height energy spectrum. In the lower screen we have a time display and these sources that are in there now, the check sources, have very long half-lives. When we look at the time spectrum of these check sources we should see pretty much a flat line across the screen and indeed that's what we're seeing. 
when I set up the uh, NIM bin to uh, detect radiation from the manganese 56, uh, we'll use a, a, a binning time for the uh, time spectrum of about 15 minutes, not the one second you see here. And we'll be watching for a characteristic period of decay uh, of about two and a half hours. Here's where we left off last night. I'm going to pick up the uh, radiated manganese dioxide source out of the uh, neutron oven. There we go. You can see it's still the black stuff it looked like last night. And we're going to bring this now over into the uh, counting area. going to place it on this little lead tray and shove it in there. Let's replace the shielding and come on over to the computer where we'll begin the experiment. I'm going to come and start our acquisition. on both of these channels. We're now approximately five hours into this gamma ray counting experiment and as we look at the uh, energy and time spectra that have accumulated so far uh, some points of interest show up. For instance this peak right here in the gamma energy spectrum at 850 keV uh, is exactly where we would expect a peak from the decay of manganese 56 and in the time spectrum down below we see uh, a steadily dropping number of counts in each 15 minute time bin. Finally here's a look at the process data from the uh, manganese 56 uh, activation experiment. This right here is the energy spectrum uh, for the gamma rays that have been detected in our sodium iodide detector and uh, it consists of the counts that were uh, measured from the irradiated sample of manganese dioxide minus the number of counts that were received in the background sample or the unirradiated sample of manganese dioxide. This energy spectrum spans the uh, range of zero all the way out to just over two MeV and in each uh, energy channel you can see a number of counts recorded uh, as well as an error bar that represents the uncertainty due to the uh, Poisson statistics of uh, the counting experiment. The main feature of this spectrum can be seen out at uh, 850 keV or so. It's this very large peak and uh, that is exactly the energy where we would uh, uh, expect to find uh, decay radiation from manganese 56. So this is very definitive evidence that we have in fact produced uh, the manganese 56 isotope by neutron capture. Here's the time spectrum. Um, each point on this graph represents the number of counts uh, received uh, in a 15 minute increment of time and you can see that they extend out from uh, uh, 15 minutes all the way up to about five hours on this uh, spectrum. And again this is net counts, the uh, number of counts received from the uh, irradiated sample minus the number received from uh, the uh, background sample. Uh, we can fit a curve to this, an exponential curve, and uh, uh, from that curve we can determine the half-life of uh, the decaying material. And we find out that the half-life is 2.6 hours. And again this is uh, uh, exactly what we would expect uh, from the decay of manganese 56. So I guess what I've uh, illustrated here is that uh, producing uh, radioisotopes at home can be uh, a very uh, easy and, and uh, uh, rewarding uh, thing to do with uh, low intensity neutron sources and uh, of homemade construction uh, and uh, some, some uh, nuclear uh, detections, uh, detection instruments that really are not all that sophisticated as these things go. Um, thank you for watching.